Ever since the world first discovered China through the writings of adventurer Marco Polo more than 700 years ago, this large Asian country has come to be regarded as the embodiment of all that is mysterious and exotic. Even now, after decades of economic growth, this vast country has lost none of its fascination. Indeed, the contrast between China's ancient customs and the new ultra-modern state that is developing has only increased the fascination with a culture that dates back many millennia. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 places to visit in China. And just wait till you see the number one that we're going to be showing in this video, something you would never even thought of, so make sure you watch till the end. Oh, before we begin, you can help support our channel by becoming a member of this channel. Press the join button below. This will help us to bring you more awesome travel videos. So if you're ready, let's cut to the Chinese chase. At number 10, Shanghai's Promenade, the Bund. A remarkable act of smart city planning and preservation can be seen in Shanghai's splendid riverside promenade, the Zhongzhuan Lu, perhaps better known as the Bund, Waitan. As you stroll this wide pedestrian zone along the Huangpu Zhang River, you'll almost forget your bang smack in the middle of China's largest city. Shanghai's population exceeds 24 million people. Famous for its European feel, a fact owed to the district's past as the location of the city's international settlement, the Bund is popular for its 52 preserved English and French-influenced buildings, many now restaurants, cafes, stores and art galleries. Representing a variety of influences from Gothic to Renaissance styles, including a number of Art Deco buildings, the architecture includes highlights such as the old Harbour Customs Office, with its bell tower, and the majestic Peace Hotel. For the best views of the Bund, visit the 468-metre Oriental Pearl Tower on the opposite bank of the Huangpu Zhang River. If time allows, be sure to also visit the Yu Garden. Known affectionately as the Garden of Happiness, this must-see garden can trace its roots back to 1559 when it was laid out. Many of the original structures survive to this day. At 9, the Potala Palace, Tibet. Another of China's most recognizable historic structures is the magnificent Potala Palace in the town of Lhasa, Tibet. Constructed as a fortress and residence for the Dalai Lama, it was for centuries a center of political and religious power and contains many of the religion's most important treasures. The first of the two Potala Palaces, the Red Palace, was built in the 17th century and contains the complex's most important shrines. These are found in the Enthronement Hall, the walls of which are covered with murals depicting scenes from the lives of the Dalai Lamas and the Tibetan kings. Other highlights of the Red Palace are its many vast halls devoted to the religion's teachings and the elaborate tombs, known as stupas, of a number of Dalai Lamas. The equally impressive White Palace was completed in 1648 and includes the sleeping quarters, studies and reception rooms most untouched since 1959 when the Dalai Lama fled Tibet. While in Lhasa, be sure to visit the superb Jewel Gardens. Part of the Dalai Lama's summer residence, these 90-acre gardens were first started in the 1840s and encompass everything from grand palaces and pavilions to pleasant lakes. Number 8. The Classical Gardens of Suzu, Jiangsu Considered one of the world's most important historical gardens, hence their designation as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Classical Gardens of Suzu should rank highly on your China travel itinerary. Located in the historic city of Suzu in Jiangsu province, these magnificent gardens were established in the 11th century, at a time when the city was experiencing unprecedented growth and were among some 270 or more gardens planted there. Of the surviving restored gardens, the most famous is the delightful Garden of Lingering, a seven-acre site laid out in 1800 on the site of a park originally created during the Ming Dynasty. One of the most famous garden complexes in China, the garden boasts a pool, several attractive buildings, a man-made hill, a grove of peach trees and a lovely covered pathway on the walls of which hang more than 300 stone tablets engraved with old Chinese characters. Also worth visiting is the Garden of the Sang Lang Ting Pavilion, a two-acre garden offering many unique features, including a double arcade connecting the inner and outer sections. At 
At seven, the Yangtze River and the Three Gorges. Known in China as Changjiang, Long River, the mighty Yangtze River extends more than 6,000 kilometers, making it the longest and most important river in China and the third longest in the world after the Amazon and the Nile. Flowing from Tibet in the west to Shanghai in the east through eight provinces, the Yangtze has, for more than 2,000 years, been China's major transportation route. Some 2,700 kilometers are navigable. Its vast catchment area, with its 700 tributaries, cover about one-fifth of the total area of the country and encompass a quarter of the country's agricultural land. While its immense length ensures the river can be visited at numerous points in China, by far the most popular for tourists is the beautiful Three Gorges, Qutang, Wu and Jiling, a 200-kilometer stretch between the towns of Fengshui and Xishang. In places a mix of raging torrents and dangerous shallows, here the river winds its way through the gorges and their rugged cliffs and high mountain peaks in a stretch of scenery as dramatic as the Grand Canyon. Numerous sightseeing options are available, from luxurious riverboat cruises focusing on the region's many historical attractions and places of scenic beauty, to challenging adventure tours along the most dramatic sections of the river. No, I think I'll pass on that one. At number 6, Chengdu Research Base of Giant Panda Breeding, Sichuan. No visit to China would be complete without at least one panda experience. While the country's top zoos boast many fine specimens of these fascinating creatures, the best place to see them in a close approximation to their natural habitat is at the excellent research base of giant panda breeding in Chengdu, located in the province of Sichuan. Here you'll have the chance to watch as many as 80 pandas go about their daily routines, from foraging to playing in the facility's large park-like setting. In addition to viewing these splendid animals up close, you'll learn a great deal about them from the many permanent exhibits and displays detailing ongoing conservation efforts to safeguard their future. If possible, try to time your visit for the morning feeding sessions when the pandas are at their most active. Better still, sign up for one of the unique experiential volunteer programs that will have you involved in the feeding and care of these cuddly creatures, and possibly even holding a baby panda. English language tours are available. At 5, cruising the Li River, Jilin. The town of Jilin, in the northeast corner of Guangxi, boasts some of China's most beautiful countryside and is famous for the Li River, which meanders through the town and surrounding karst mountains. While for hundreds of years this unique scenery has attracted poets and artists and has been the subject of countless fairy tales and legends, these days it's popular with tourists from around the world wanting to see this natural splendor up close. The best way to enjoy the area is to take a cruise along the Li River. The most popular stretch is from Jilin to Yangshuo, where the river meanders peacefully through some 80 kilometers of remarkable rock formations and caves with romantic names such as the Mount of Unique Beauty, Elephant Trunk Hill and Reed Flute Cave. Depending upon the type of boat used, you can choose from a tourist cruise ship to small bamboo punts. Trips can take anywhere from a few hours to multiple days. At number 4, the Summer Palace, Beijing. An easy 15-kilometer commute from Beijing, the sumptuous Imperial Summer Palace, Yihe Yuan, is set amid more than 700 acres of beautiful parkland and is one of China's most visited attractions. While the palace itself was built in 1153, its large lake was added in the 14th century to enhance the Imperial Gardens. Highlights include the magnificent Hall of Benevolence and Longevity, Renshu Dian, with its throne and the beautiful Great Theatre, a private three-storey structure built in 1891 to satisfy the imperial family's love of opera. This historic venue is still used for performances of traditional Chinese plays and musical events and it's worth a visit for a performance or show. Other highlights include the Hall of Happiness and Longevity, Le Xu Tang Hall, with its lovely gardens and courtyards, as well as many miles of picturesque pathways and walking trails. If time allows, try to also take in the ruins of the old Summer Palace, said to have once been one of the country's most elaborate and architecturally attractive palaces. Sadly, this once impressive structure was destroyed by colonial forces in the mid-1800s.
and now at three, the terracotta army Qian. It was while digging wells on the outskirts of Qian in the 1970s that farmers stumbled across what was to be China's most important archaeological find, the terracotta army. Distributed over three large underground pits and built to guard the first emperor's tomb, the find included more than 8,000 life-size warriors, some 520 horses and more than 100 chariots, along with numerous other non-military characters dating from around 280 BC. Although some were severely damaged due to the passing of time, many of the statues unearthed have been painstakingly reassembled and stand as testament to the importance bestowed upon the emperor and the afterlife. The site, part of the Emperor Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum site park, is one of China's most important tourist destinations and offers the unforgettable experience of standing in front of this assembly of soldiers and horses as if inspecting a centuries-old parade English language guided tours are available. And number two, the Forbidden City and the Imperial Palace, Beijing. China's largest and most important building, the Forbidden City, Zijin Cheng, also known as the Imperial Palace, is situated in the very heart of Beijing and is a must see when visiting the country. Started during the Yuan Dynasty between 1271 and 1368, much of the complex seen today was built between 1406 and 1420. Really many splendid palaces in one, this sprawling complex was the residence of 24 Ming and Qing emperors, whose presence forbade the entry of anyone other than the imperial family and their courtesans. Covering some 720,000 square meters and protected by a 10-meter high wall with watchtowers and a wide moat, this massive complex consists of areas set aside for ceremonial and administrative purposes, as well as a private residence used by the emperor. While it can take many hours to see everything, highlights include the five white marble Golden River Bridges, the Hall of Supreme Harmony, a 35-meter tall building housing the imperial throne, and the exquisite Emperor's Banquet Hall, the Hall of Preserving Harmony, and the Palace Museum, with its large collection of art and artefacts from the Ming and Qing dynasties. English language museum tours are available. And finally, drum roll please, perhaps you might not be so surprised to find at number one, the Great Wall of China. Nobody can be a true hero unless he has been on the Great Wall, goes the popular Chinese saying, one that clearly demonstrates the importance placed upon this unique ancient monument. The magnificent Great Wall of China, known in Chinese as Changcheng, or the Long Wall, stretches more than 6,000 kilometers from the fortresses of Shanghai Gan to the east all the way to Xinguayan in the west, passing through Hebei, Tianjin, Beijing, where the best preserved sections of the wall can be visited. Inner Mongolia, Ninjia, and Gansu. Averaging 6 to 8 meters in height, but rising as high as 16 meters and wide enough in places for five horses or 10 men to pass, the wall boasts numerous battlements and watchtowers. Some of the wall's oldest fortifications date back as far as the 7th century BC, with the best known areas added around 210 BC when its various sections were joined together. Today, the most visited section of the wall is near Badaling Pass, northwest of Beijing, easily reached by public transport or organized tours. Other restored sections worth a visit include the section near Gubeiku, 130 kilometers from Beijing, and in Muqianzhou, just 70 kilometers northeast of Beijing. And there you have the top 10 places to visit in China. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your Chinese friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. See you next time, travelers.